We've gotten our dog hair made, dog hair yarn, she and Gora made. And now, because I prefer art yarns with lots of textures instead of uniform yarns, we will need to do a swatch. We've already done our wraps per inch. I'll show you a picture of that in a moment. But I do like a version of a crochet cast on that I was taught. I just like it for the edges of my hats. So that's what I do. So with this swatch, what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit 20, 20 stitches, and then I'm going to do 20 rows, and then I'm just going to measure. Once I measure, I'm going to know how many stitches per inch I get on these size 7 needles. I like a really tight and really big brim on my hats. And then I'll be able to finish with the ba my basic, I guess, template of a big brim hat that I like to make. I'll show you that as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And as you see, I have different thicknesses. I am a texture person. I figure if I wanted to make my own yarns, great. If I wanted to make them all uniform stitches, precision-like, like they just came out of the store, I might as well have not spend all the money on a wheel and combs and hackles and nitty noddies and all that stuff and I might as well have just gone and bought the yarn. That's just kind of how I see it. So I just have a lot of fun. Oh, and I always like to keep an extra stitch marker on all of my interchangeables because I lose these things so much. I actually keep bowls of stitch markers. One out here on the porch, one in the living room, one in the kitchen. Um, I Do I have one in the room? I've measured my wraps per inch and they came out to eight wraps per inch. That's an Aran weight yarn, so yay. So what I usually do with my Aran weight on average, and I will check in multiple spaces because like I said, this is not a this is not a um, con single consistency throughout my yarns. I <laughs> really don't believe in that. And I do like to do my blending. It gives me this great marbled effect. So this is my brim. I love large brims on my hats. This actually comes to five inches. So the beauty of this is that someone who's going to have this hat, if their head's maybe a little bit, um, you know, taller than average, they can adjust the brim. They can use it kind of like a slouch style. It's going to hold on, you know. Um, they can bend it, flip it up like a brim, hold on to them. It's going to be uber warm. I know everybody loves that word uber. I like it too. And you can see the, the dog hair in, in this, the undercoat of the dog. It's the white, and it is just haloing out as I'm knitting. This is where you get the gore part of the she and gore. She and being French for dog, and then the gore being that angora-like haloing effect that we're going to see on it. So you can also see the colors I use. You can see the purples. You can see the coral, little bits of the brown, and then, of course, the little silk splashes that I like to put in there just to kind of give it a blast. There's a little bit of sparkly in there too. And all in all, I should get a really nice, warm, dense hat out of this. This is gonna be a hat that you're gonna use in really, really cold weather. So I'm happy with it. And I start out, usually when I have Aran weight yarns, I will actually start out on size seven needles. I'm, I'll do about 80 stitches. And then from there, once I get the brim the size I want, beautiful thing about interchangeable needles, thank you Knitter's Pride, is I can switch these to an 8 or if I'm feeling that it can take it and not look weird, I might even go to a 9. It's just, it just depends. I don't want a really too heavy, uh, bulky a fill up on that, but I want to make sure that the head's covered. The head's going to be warm. You're not going to have all this lace kind of effect going on there. So right now yeah, I think this could easily take a nine so I'm gonna switch out my needles I'm gonna work on the rest of this hat and I'm gonna show you my progress right before I get to the crown and I start my decreasing 
to the part where the body of the hat is done. Now I went for four inches. So you have a five inch cuff and then a four inch hat. So when this is folded up, you're gonna get a really nice, really high brim for a lot of extra warmth here. So now that we're here, we're gonna start our decrease. Decrease. I know some people love a to just kind of pull taut. I cannot. I don't like that. I actually prefer a knitted decrease. I just think it makes everything look better. So my decrease style, um, since I cast on eight stitches, is first rows knit six, knit two together, and repeat around. Knit the next row around. And the next time you're going to knit five, knit two together. Next row, knit one around, and you're just going to do this so that you can get the nice shaped crown going on there. So you get like the star effect when all is said and done. And you do this all the way till you get, till you've done two. Then you do knit two together around, knit one, cut your yarn. You're going to pull it through. And then you can go ahead with the blocking and just finishing off your hat. So I'm going to get to that and then I'll see you then. So now I'm at the crown. I'm at the knit one, knit two together part. Um, you can start seeing the definition of the decrease. I've switched to my double points as it gets more difficult near the end because of the um, decrease in stitches available to keep going on the circular. So we're just going to keep going with my double points and hope that one doesn't slide out like they usually like to do with me. I'll be honest with you on that. But with my decreases, as you can see, you can spot just that line, which gives me a really nice visual effect for something you have to do anyway. I just think it makes the hat look better. This, is, this brim is going to go over most of the head. So it's going to be like a hat with an extra thick headband wrapped around it. So this is going to keep a lot of warmth in. The dog hair is haloing out beautifully the more I work with it. So, oh, I cannot wait to get this blocked and finished. And then I will show you result when I'm finished. And then one after I block it. Now we're at the part where I've cut my strand. And we have all of our live stitches. And we're just going to take them off all the way around. And once we are done with that, we'll be able to then pull those stitches tight and then weave them in. Like so. So this is our we finished the knitting part. We haven't blocked or anything yet. And so what I like to do, just poke that through, flip this puppy inside out to the purl side. Now I'm going to tighten this up, knot it off, and then weave in my ends. After that I'm going to weave in spines down there and then I'll show you what this guy looks like. So I have woven in my ends at the top, flipped it back out. This is my remainder, so we'll see maybe a pom-pom bit or a tassel. But, like I said, this is going to be a nice big brim on a nice hat, so we're going to get some nice added warmth here. So I'm going to go and get my mannequin so that you can see what it looks like. So. Hope you've enjoyed watching this. You know the drill. Like, subscribe. Tell me what you what else you'd like to see. Any particular breeds you'd like me to talk about, work with, give you information on. Just let me know in the comments down below. Here is my finished hat. Ends woven in. Look at that. Nice. And if you look right here, you can see that's why I like a nice shaped crown. It just looks better. So you know, if you want me, if you want to see me working with any specific types of dogs, undercoated dogs, St. Bernard, Great Pyrenees, those are amongst the best. But any dog or dog hybrid with 
a good long undercoat, one and a half um, inches minimum just to spin it by itself. Just let me know. Um, so like and subscribe. Leave your suggestions, ideas, just impressions down below for me. Thanks and I'll see you next time.